When describing a movement of a dynamical system, it is very common to use something called the phase plane plot. Now, what is it? When you are given a system, for example, a simple pendulum, you know that there is a minimum number of states that you have to use in order to describe its movement or motion. So, first of all, we usually introduce an angle. I will call it x1, the first state, and I will denote it somewhere here. Now, after that, we introduce the velocity. In this case, since this is a rotational system, I will introduce angular velocity and I will name it x2. That's my angular velocity. I've got two states. I already know also that due to the existence of dynamics, I've got a mass here, length here, I will have some equations for, first of all, the change of x1 over time. I will also have equation for the change of x2 over time. The first one will be the change of position, so the velocity. The second will be the change of velocity, so angular acceleration. These two govern the evolution of my system, the movement. But in order to visualize it, I either have to animate the system actually to show you how it is moving, for example, starting from here. So if, for example, let's say that I've got mass and I've got friction coefficient in here, this means my system will first of all move here, then move a little bit back, again, 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 and eventually it will stop in the middle. So it will move between two positions, but moving closer and closer to the middle point. Okay, is there any other means of visualizing this movement? Of course, I can make a plot. So I can make a standard plot of position x1 versus, I think I'll need it a little bit more in the middle, versus time. So, how does this position change over time? Now, you can already see the position changing here. You start from this point. I will mark it here. And then you move towards zero. Okay, I move towards zero. Then you move to the negative side, positive side, negative side, positive side. And finally you stabilize. If you take a look, this is this plot. Always when you sketch something, you can just make the same plot over here. It will pretty much look alike. So you get a pretty good visualization from here, how it will, it will move. But this only gives you the position versus time. What if we want to know what are the velocities in each of these points? In this particular scenario, we start over here with a velocity of zero. We are standing still in this position. Then we move. Okay, we start moving due to gravity and we know that we will cross this position, but we will be pretty fast when crossing this one. So we will have a velocity in here. But then again, we will end in a position like that, so, but it's of course a little bit closer, again with velocity zero. And we will go back, this time with a velocity here. Then we will go back with a smaller velocity. Then we will go back with a smaller velocity. Can we make a plot out of these velocities to know where the system was moving at each point? Okay, we can try. So we can try making a plot where on these two axes there is no time. There is only x1. So what happens when you are at the position x1 with a velocity of x2? Oh, so this is position velocity. That's why we call, we call it phase plane, because we have the configurations, the states of our system instead of time. It has a unique name, this kind of a plot. Now, I know that for my little simulation, I start over here. 
I will mark this position somewhere on my plot. I start, for example, at 30 degrees. It's just an assumption, really. So I mark that this is x1 equal to 30 degrees. And of course, I'm, I'm starting standing still. So when it comes to velocities, these velocities are here, the plus side. These velocities are here, the minus side. I start exactly at point zero, so flat, not higher, not lower. Then I start moving. At the very next millisecond, I will be a little bit closer to zero and I will gain a velocity in this direction. So it's a negative, negative velocity. So I will be getting negative velocities and I will be getting closer to zero. So I will be closer and lower. Okay, then I am getting again a little bit closer to zero, faster. Again, lower and closer. And then at zero, I have a maximum velocity I can get. But after that, I will lose velocity because the gravity will be acting against me. So I will be moving slower, but I will be still going. And finally, for example, at 28 degrees on the minus side, I will stop. So I will be losing velocity. I will be getting closer to the zero velocity. But at the same time, I am still going to the negative side. But I need to stop at minus 28. So I'm going, going, going. Okay, and then I'm making uh, my other half of my movement. So I'm going to this side, going through this point with a full positive velocity and stopping, for example, at 26 degrees. So I will be stopping here, but I will be getting positive velocities. So I'm gaining velocity, maximum velocity at this point, and then losing it. Oh, it's a part of a spiral. Okay, so what happens if I repeat this movement, but each time I am getting closer to zero? I will actually be getting closer and closer and closer. And after some time, I may be hitting zero or a point as close to zero as possible. So. So depending on where I start, I am getting a plot like that. I need an arrow in here. I need an arrow because this movement has a direction. So this is my face plane plot. Of course, I also need 30 degrees and I need velocities, but I can get them from the simulation. So I need actually to plot in here x1 versus x2 without any time. How do you extract x1 and x2? After you create a simulation, you should be given a pair, t and x. x is structured in a way that you have those two in a form of, a, of two columns. So you will be getting two values. Of course, this will be not in degrees, but in radians. So you will start with about 0 0.52. I don't really remember, but something like that. I think it's pi over 6, so 0 0.52. And then you get negative velocities. In order to extract them, you need to take x, take every row, but take only one of the columns in MATLAB and make a plot. So this is a universal part. This one, you need to get it from the simulation, quite probably ODE45 or ODE23 or something else. You can also make a very simple for loop with a Newton algorithm. Okay, that's it when it comes to the basics of phase plane portraits. There are, of course, other things you need to remember when dealing with them. Sometimes you will be getting orbits. 
Sometimes you will be getting loops. For example, you will have a loop when you go back to the precisely the same point. Of course, you can exhibit the behavior that is unstable. So you start somewhere and you go to the infinity. So when you analyze it, you need to be very careful about seeing what happens in those systems.